It's 1958. The American public are gripped in a state of fear and anxiety after the recent Soviet launch of Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite. Ever since the end of World War II, the United States and Soviets have been locked in an ever-escalating nuclear arms race that has now evolved into a space race. At this point in time, the Soviets have been winning the race and it seems that the US is technologically falling behind their Cold War rivals. America desperately needs to turn the tide. To do that, they need a show of strength to not only boost morale at home and raise nation confidence, but also remind the world why they are the dominant superpower. But what does that win look like? Be prepared for unpredictable choice. You're watching Space Progress Channel. When America successfully placed the first humans on the moon on 20th July 1969. However, men might never have taken that small step if the United States had decided to action another of its plans, Project A-119. The Air Force wanted a mushroom cloud so large that it would be visible on Earth. The United States Air Force put the top secret project into motion around May 1958. It had the unthreatening and innocuous title of a study of lunar research flights and was led by Leonard Rifle, a leading physicist who would go on to hold the position of deputy director of the Apollo program at NASA. Rifle was asked by the Air Force to fast-track a project to investigate the visibility and effects of a theoretical nuclear explosion on the surface of the Moon. From the outset, Rifle knew the project was politically motivated. Speaking to the Observer, in 2000 he stated, It was clear the main aim of the proposed detonation was a PR exercise and a show of one upmanship. The Air Force wanted a mushroom cloud so large it would be visible on Earth. The idea was that such a display of force demonstrated America's advanced weaponry could have intimidated the Soviet Union, reassured the American public of their country's nuclear capabilities and put the US back in a pole position all in one swoop. So, just how far did the project get? Rifle headed up a 10-person team that included Jared Cooper, the man now considered by many as the father of modern planetary science, and a young Carl Sagan, an astronomer who would go on to claim celebrity status with his television work. Sagan would also be the reason why this video you're watching even exists. Whilst applying for the Miller Institute Graduate Fellowship to Berkeley in 1959, Sagan disclosed information about the top-secret project. Although the world would not be made aware of its existence at the time, the fact Sagan had written about the Project A-119 means that a breadcrumb trail had been left, one that was picked up by writer Key Davidson whilst he was working in Sagan's biography in the late 90s. When his book hit the shelves, Rafel decided to go on the record to clarify some of the claims or, in his words, to extend the historical record beyond the Davidson biography by offering some additional first-hand comments. Rafel was based at the Military Baked Armor Research Foundation in Chicago, now called the Illinois Institute of Technology Research. From May 1958, to January 1959, he and his team reported on the likely effects that the nuclear blast will cause, including dust and gas behavior, and the visual differences if the detonation occurred on the dark or light side of the Moon. Although the exact delivery system of the nuclear device has never been divulged, Rifle claimed that it was technically feasible at the time to hit a target some 238,000 miles away on the Moon with an accuracy of within 2 miles. It's likely that fate would have involved an intercontinental ballistic missile, which the US just so happened to have launched in 1959. The nuclear device would have been an atom bomb, not a hydrogen one, as the latter would have been too heavy for the missile to carry. Rifle stated in his 1959 report that had such a feat been accomplished, there would have been scientific and military benefits as well as the obvious political ones. He writes, It is quite clear that certain military objectives would be served since information will be supplied concerning the environment of space, concerning detection of nuclear device testing in space, and concerning the capability of nuclear weapons for space warfare. As for the scientific findings, the plan would be to place three identical instruments onto the Moon's surface prior to the detonation. These instruments would then take a variety of measurements before, 
during and after the nuclear explosion. Their findings would help scientists learn more about the composition of the Moon and its environment, as well as about our own planet. There was even a suggestion that a nuclear explosion might expose any microbial life on the Moon. When the project first came to light in the late 90s, early news reports claimed that the nuclear device would have blown up the Moon. In a 2012 interview with CNN, Rafel clarified that this was a gross misunderstanding of the facts. Absolutely not, it would have been microscopic, so to speak, he said. It would have left a crater that would have been, I think, essentially invisible from Earth, even with a good telescope. Although the blast would have been small in relative terms, fears of radioactive material contaminating the pristine lunar environment became a key reason as to why the project never got off the ground. Environmental disturbances, as well as biological and radiological contamination, mean the operation would have come at a huge cost to science. Rifle report vehemently stressed this point stating, if such biological contamination of the moon occurred, it would represent an unparalleled scientific disaster, eliminating several possibly very fruitful approach to such problems as the early history of the solar system, the chemical composition of matter in the remote past, the origin of life on Earth, and the possibility of extraterrestrial life. One giant nuclear blast for mankind was thankfully not meant to be. Even if it had all gone off without a hitch, Rafael explained to his superiors that it was unlikely the public would embrace the success of the mission quite as much as they would. Writing in his report, he stated, It is also certain that unless the climate of world opinion were well prepared in advance, a considerable negative reaction could be stimulated. In the end, Project A-190 was shelved leaving Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to edge their names in the annals of history. Their accomplishment provided us with remarkable, inspiring and positive images of mankind's greatest ever feat of exploration. The 1967 Outer Space Treaty between the US and Soviets, among others, stopped any such plans cropping up again in the future. The treaty banned the placement of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction in space and limited the use of the Moon to peaceful endeavors only. To this day, many Cold War documents remain under lock and key in the US, including the full details of Project A-119. Many reports written at the time have since been destroyed. The Pentagon, US Air Force and US government have all continually refused to comment on the plan, neither confirming nor denying it ever existed. Take care of our moon and watch our channel. See you again.